What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing. I'm fulfilling a request uh, that was made to me by I think five different people, which was, "Hey man, can we see an update on your uh, your Metal Falls Christron, a True King, True Draco Zodiac deck?" And I was like, "Yes." Um, I've been working on the deck, um, specifically the new inclusion of Triple Rescue Rabbit, because I, like an idiot, forgot that Rescue Rabbit is off the list. So, Dino Rabbits can live again, but I'm not playing Dino Rabbits. Uh, so, without further ado, we're going to hop right into the main deck. It is not 40 cards. Uh, just a spoiler alert to those of you who are 40 card fanatics. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start with the monster lineup. So, we have three copies of Rescue Rabbit, the new MVP of the deck. Because there's so much combos that he can do all by himself. It's just amazing. <clears throat> and um, because you open up with so many normal summons, right? And it's like you have the pendulum scales. You just pendulum summon. And then you banish this guy. And then you just like extend your plays even further. It really helps. It helps out a lot. So like Rescue Rabbit does like one card combos for like Baguska, rank threes. And also by banishing him, you summon the attributes that you need to summon your true kings. Take Cinder Place to make Calamities, do a, a bunch of different combos. Uh, Rest Grab it even, you know, helps you out for your Fusion Plays. Like this card and Metal Force Fusion alone, just like this two-card combo, gets you into like Mithurium, etc, etc. Rest Grab it's a freaking boss, bro. Like, he's back! And then for the Metal Force, we're probably pretty much standard. Everybody should know what they do, so I'm just going to drop them because they all do the same thing. So you pretty much, you know, three Volt Flame, three Gold Driver. Three silvered. I don't really like doing this. I never do my deck profiles like, you know, three, three. You got to play this three because it's good. But I've, I just feel like I'd be an idiot if I explain what the Metal Falls do. So I, I'm just going to just tell you I play three of all of them. And um, the main reason why I'm playing three of all of them because I don't play any extenders like summoners are painful decision. So there's no other ways to search them out. So I pretty much have to hard draw them in my opening hand. So I was like, you know what? Let's play 15 of these bad boys. Uh, you need them for, like, almost every combo. Like, there's a lot of different, like, two-card, three-card, even four-card combos in this deck. But every single one of them requires at least one scale. You have to have a scale. Um, or your combos are just, like, eh. they're good, but they're not good. But then, like, if you don't have those, you have an extender, like, diagram to help you out a lot. Like, this deck is full of extenders, believe it or not. There's, like, a few go-to plays, and then everything else is, like, to get you there. If it makes sense. And then for the Christrons, we played three copies of Thisburn. He's the only Christron that I'm playing at three now because he's the uh basically the searcher for the archetype. Um he just searches you for your uh your um sulfonir so you can do the combo that I'll, I'll I'll show you guys at the end of it. It's my favorite combo. I show it like every time I do a deck profile this for this deck, because it's the combo that inspired me to build this deck. And then we play um two copies of Smiger. I only play one target for him now, so I feel like you only need to resolve one, but at the same time, you need names, and he's a really, really good name. Um, the, the, they have on-field effects, which help you a lot, because they destroy any face-up card. And then uh, for the rest of the turn, after effect resolves, you can only summon machines. So, cool thing is, you can summon what you want first, which isn't machines, then activate their effects. For the rest of the turn, after it resolves, you can only summon machines, which is what you're going to summon at the end of your combos anyway. So, they pop scales, they pop... Uh, Mithurium to clear your extra monster zone. They pop their own synchro, you know, matrix. They pop true kings. Uh, they, they, there's just so many combos. Like, all the combos, funny thing, revolve around popping your own cards. Like, Supply Squad would not be a bad idea in this deck. It really wouldn't. So, if you're trying to, like, build this deck, um, just run some Supply Squads. It'll help you out because all your combos require for you to destroy cards. If you don't open up with the way to destroy your own cards, you have no combos. Like, that's how serious it is to destroy your cards. A uh, Sulfonir at two, <coughs> because three is really, really bricky in this deck. And once I see one, I never need the second one. But it's like you need Christron names and cards. Like, because, you know, Sulfonir is really, really dope Um, when you have another Christron card. So, like, it's nice to open up with either him and this fern and, like, another Christron card for the combos. So, like, you play two of him for the names and also just for the monster count in general. And then uh, one Citri and one Rion, the two tuners of the deck... Um, I feel like they get recycled so easily, and I was like, I don't want to brick on the Christron engine because the Christrons are like extenders as well. Pretty much, this deck is all about Metal Fools and True Kings and True Dracos. Then you have Christrons and Zodiacs to extend your plays and enable you to go further into either Calamities or even <coughs> uh, to clear your extra Monster Dome to do a Metal Fools Fusion, for example, which is really dope. So, yeah. Just food for thought if you're wondering what's my um my theory behind why I play this deck and how it works. Um, 
That's pretty much like one of the reasons and how it kind of works in a way. Uh, two copies of Whiptail for your Barras targets. And then for the True Kings, <laughs> we play six of them. Uh, we play three copies of Agni Mazud, the Vanisher. Um, he's just so freaking broken. Uh, you play like 18 fires, so he's like always live. And then you play three copies of Brassos because you play, I believe, 11 waters. So you play 11 waters and 15 fires. 18 fires and 11 waters, sorry. So these are live without your diagram. Like you can draw these in your opening hand and just resolve their effects. Like if you draw Agni Mazud and Barastos in the same hand, you've got calamities right there because you're going to have either A, a water or B, a fire, which helps you out a lot. Um, So yeah, these, these guys are just amazing. These are not the extenders. Your extenders enable you to trigger these to make calamities, which is like one of the main cards you're trying to make. And you also have Masterpiece because he's too darn easy to summon. <clears throat> it is always nice to have like Calamity's Masterpiece staring at your opponent's face. <clears throat> you play Continuouses, which are Metal Force Combination, Zodiac Barrage, uh, the True Draco Spells and Traps, etc., etc. You have like, you know, good fodder and great for him and also a lot of ways to tribute summon him. Which helps you out. Uh, so that pretty much sums up the monster count. I know it's pretty hefty. Um, it's chunky. And it looks like, oh, dude, this is so many normal. Um, this is so many normal summons. That's why I just love the metaphors for so many different reasons. Cause what happens when you have two scales? You can pin them summon everything that's not a level eight or higher, pretty much. So you never want to pin them summon your true kings, anyways. You can summon them by their own effects. So you can virtually pin them summon everything from your hand except for your true kings and masterpiece himself. Um, so the scales help you out immensely. If you ever feel like, oh, I open up with too many normal summons, dude, you can just go balls deep in it. Like, no doubt. And then for spells, you have three copies of Double Ds and also three copies of Optimus Prime to get you there. You need as many ways to um, pop cards as possible. Diagram is one of the best ways to pop cards because you can pop like this Fern, search, and then search again. Pop Sulfonir, search, and then special. Uh, like, pop Bismal Gear, pop Metal Foles Combination because Diagram destroys any card. Like, there's a lot of combos. I can see here and name so many different Diagram combos. Like, there's like an nth, a myriad of diagram combos in this deck. And then you have three copies of Barrage. This is also a combo piece as well. Um, Barrage on your Barastos. Like if you have um Barastos, but like, for example, like no way to resolve Agni Mazud or something like that, you can Barrage on your Barastos or Barrage on your Agni Mazud. And then that'll enable you to extend to make your uh, Calamities anyways, even if you don't have diagram. So, like, Barrage can act kind of like Diagram, but it doesn't search. But what it does is pop the True King so you can get its effect off. Or you can pop, you know, the Crystron to get its effect in Grave. Or just, like, pop your Metaphors Mithurium to clear your extra monster zone. Then use Mithurium's effect to float and then summon Calamities in the occupied slot that, you know, Mithurium was in. So, it's, like, so many different purposes. Uh, it's, dude, I, I just don't want to waste too much time explaining it. I have to do combo tutorials. I know that I have been, um, you know procrastinating on doing combo tutorials with this deck it's just because like every time i think about doing it i'm like dude this is going to take like 30 minutes because there's so many combos and they take forever so i kind of get discouraged but i promise i got you guys because this deck people don't understand how it plays and a lot of people have asked me how does it work and like even when i tell them they're still like bro i, I just don't know how to play it so i'm going to teach you guys but one metaphors fusion and one full metaphors fusion and then one disciples uh heritage doesn't come up enough but i was like disciples to put back the engine of the true kings is really really clutch it helps you out a lot and then for traps you play a two metal force combination because three is just too much two is enough because you recycle it and keep just you know searching tribute for your uh masterpiece and then you get to search a metal force scale after you summon masterpiece and then he's unaffected by that trap funny thing that also i wanted to know in the artwork of these cards so if you look in the artwork of metal force combination right <clears throat> what do you see the metal force fighting they're fighting agni mazud right uh, if you look at the artwork of Zodiac Barrage, you don't know what they're fighting because it doesn't show you, but they're actually getting ready to fight True King Lithosagem. Then you look in the artwork of a card like Crystron Impact, right? And then you see that they're fighting this True King himself, Barastos, the uh, Fathomer. And then you go so far as to look at um, the actual Metaphos counter, and you think to yourself, what the heck are they countering? They're countering an attack from the True Kings. It's like so dope, like the lore behind it um i show my traps in like a totally awkward order because the artwork i was explaining the artwork and then return you look on the artwork of true king's return do you know that that is masterpiece and um no where's he at dang it it's apocalypse it's on the artwork of apocalypse not return because this is actually just um basically agni mazud barastos the fathomer and true king lithosagem 
and then true king of all calamities and a sinner and that's true king's return but in the arc of apocalypse you see masterpiece metaltron the true draco combatant and they're going up to fight calamities by themselves and calamities already like attacking them it's really really cool um like there's a lore behind every single archetype that's in this deck. It's actually like a, a anime based theme, you know, kind of thing like going on. And it's also like a YouTube lore. And also, you know, Diagram kind of tells the story. So you have Rap here, you have Metaphor Stealing, then you have Christian Rion, and they're fusing their power to basically create Masterpiece. And this is the first Masterpiece, which is not the true Draco Slaying King, Masterpiece, the true Draco Slayer. Masterpiece, the true Draco Slaying King, evolved and transformed and got that power by fusing with the abilities of Mariamde, the true Draco Phoenix. And her disciples, which you look right here, this is actually another uh, thing that kind of gives it away. Her disciples are actually the Dracos. Dynamite, Ignis Heat, the General, and also Majesty Maiden are all disciples of Mariamde, the Wind True King, who is known as the true Draco Phoenix. In addition to that, Dynamite came from the, the Dynamist. Ignis Heat from the Ignites, Majesty made it from Magispectors, and Dryath, the uh, True Draco General, came from the Amorphages. Just some, you know, food for thought if you didn't know. If it doesn't interest you, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Um, but yeah, there's like a story behind this deck, which is another reason why I love this deck so much. It's one of my favorite homemade spicy decks. Like, I love making spice. I'm addicted to spice. We played two Mithurium, one uh, Orichalc, and also one Alkaes. Mithurium recycles everything, so you don't even have to play multiples of these. You could just keep putting them back. Never ending. Uh, you got to play two Mithuriums because, like, you need to be able to put one back with the other. And then, you know, vice versa, put one back with the other. And then you also can grind it out with uh, combination. Like, when you do combination, fuse Mithurium and something else. Summon Orcal combination, summons Mithurium in the main monster zone. You're just like, there's, like, some really nutty combos. Like, the Metal Falls are, like, the most extensive engine in this entire uh, deck. And they just, like, you live longer off of Metal Falls than anything else because Calamities don't last forever. And then a uh, two matrix and one powered exentron for the tuners. I mean for the synchros. Uh, you can make like any synchro in this deck, really. Even if your first turn combos with sulfonir are correct, you can do like ancient fairy for more diagrams. But I was like, I just wanted to play machines because if you don't always open with the nuts, you're basically limited to machines. So like, I just didn't want situational plays where it's like my extra deck has monsters that I can't always summon, but these I can always summon them if it makes sense to you. And if not, I'm sorry if I confuse you. Then uh, we have Chlamydia, True King of all Chlamydia, Trishula, one Chalk and Nine, one Tiger Mortar, and one Borbo. They're just here. Honestly, Barrage wasn't even here to make Zeus from the extra deck. It was here to just pop other cards and then bring out Whiptail. And then just like summon a Zoo on top of Whiptail to try to banish something. And if not, you can just go like Chalk and Nine. And um, this Levier is going to come out for Mrs. Radiant because it actually came up where I like extended into Chalk and Nine. And then. Uh, Use Chaka 9, and then I could have Link Summoned into Mrs. Radiant, and then literally done True King of All Calamities and Metal Falls Mithurium, which was like, to me, you know, that's pretty cool how you can just do Zodiac, and then uh, True Kings and Metal Falls. Like, just having all the archetypes go off in one turn, but um, because I wasn't playing Mrs. Radiant, I couldn't have done it. So, Levier is going to come out for Mrs. Radiant, because, like, it's really here to extend to uh, summon back um, your Banished Rescue Rabbit, because you banished him, obviously, for his effect. And then, you know, summon him back, banish him again, and then just, like, summon more. But I was like, eh, you play three of them. <laughs> like, it's not really, like, necessary. I guess I was being greedy by choosing this card. Then you have Baguska and Tornado Dragon for your uh, Rescue Rabbit place. Or, you know, you just play a lot of level four, so it'll come up. I just need to make space in this deck for more, like, Link monsters. Because I realized, like, dude, even though Diagram, uh, Masterpiece, True Kings, Metaphors, and Christians can all pop the monster in your extra monster zone... It's always nice to control multiple monsters from the extra mo uh, from the extra deck. And the only way you can do that is off of Metaphor's combination with, you know, Orichalc and Mithurium. Um, but on that note, that's pretty much summing up the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I really do hope that you were entertained as well. Um, just let me know in the comment section below uh, what your honest opinion and thoughts are. You know, I'm always open for constructive criticism. And at the same time, I'd love to hear what you guys, you know, want to um, basically what you have to say and also to hear your thoughts because... Um, I learned a lot from you guys. Some of you guys even inspired me to play some awkward card choices. And I was like, dude, you got the spice. You got the spice. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. I love y'all. Stay tuned for future content. I'm going to be uploading like a madman. So just stay in your seat if you're watching. And if not, check it out another time. Peace.